Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Activities for People Living at Home with Dementia. We are proud to offer this series with funding from the Area Agency on Aging and the United Way of Tarrant County. These programs are recorded and are made available for viewing through a YouTube channel for future use. Check it out if you haven't gone on YouTube, it's pretty neat. I'm Martha Brown, your host for today's activities. We are presenting today Cookie Conversations with our Executive Director and Chef, Gail Snyder. I can't wait to see what Gail has in her kitchen for us. That's right. Gail, I'm going to put you on uh, uh, big screen view and let okay. you have it. All right. Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad to be back to do some baking. And we aren't making cookies today, but I think you'll like what we're doing. Okay. So the last time I was supposed to be with you, I had an unexpected illness and we had to reschedule. So I have to give you an explanation. Um, I'm wearing a new apron. This is my wow. Christmas oh, bird. Oh, nice. bird. Okay. Cardinals, yes. Cardinals. I finished, I was actually in the middle of working on this and prepping for the baking program the next day when I became ill. Mm. So I, even though Christmas is over, it's still January, so I'm wearing my Christmas yeah. apron. It's a, winter, it's a winter apron, it doesn't matter. It's a right. winter apron, okay. I just need some snow on the tree branches or something. There you go. <laughs> okay, so today we are making cinnamon rolls using the recipe from Cinnabon. Oh, yummy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. How many of you have had cinnamon bun, Cinnabon cinnamon rolls before? Everybody? Yep. I've yep. never had it, but I've never baked okay. it. Okay, so that's the recipe that we're using. So Martha, I'm gonna share my screen so everyone can see the recipe. All right, do you see the recipe? Yes, yes ma'am. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yum. Yummy, yeah. So the one um, alteration we'll have to make is I can't mail cream cheese frosting in the mail. <laughs> so we'll have to do something different when we frost them or let you frost them at home when you receive them. That's all right. We can frost yeah. at home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're supposed to start out with three quarter cup of water, warm water and active dry yeast. So I've turned on the water to get our water hot or warm. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's not either, hey? And I have a trusty little, and I'm going to go ahead and minimize the recipe so you all can see better what's going on in the kitchen. So I'm going to be using this trusty little uh, thermometer to measure the temperature of the water because if we get it too hot, it will kill the yeast. How neat. Yeah, yeah that's cool. That's a cool uh, thermometer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Things are I've so got much one. Steve has one. I've got one like that. Yep. Never use it in the kitchen, but I use it for other things. Is it immersion thing, or is it the you look at it and touch and take a picture of the water? You just, it's got a laser, so you just press the point it, and press the button. So you, I've got the cup of water. You just point it at the water, and it tells you what the temperature is. Oh my goodness! Right on target. Yeah. yeah. So you don't oh. touch, you don't touch whatever you're measuring at all. That's so right. Easy. It's a laser. It's a laser. May I ask what kind of price that is? Mm, probably less than twenty dollars. They're not bad. Um, I've had I'll look that at one. Thank you. Okay, so then I'm going to add a package of dry yeast. The recipe calls for two and a quarter teaspoons, and I measured this out, and that's pretty much what's in the little packet. Believe it or not. Really? That's yeah. interesting. <laughs> they did something right. Yeah. And then we're going to add uh, 
Um, it, the recipe calls for half a cup of granulated sugar, and it wants us to add one tablespoon of that to this yeast mixture. So we're gonna put a tablespoon of sugar into the yeast mixture. Gives it something for the yeast to eat. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now we're waiting for the yeast to bloom. So I don't know if you can see that from my other camera. It's starting to bloom already. Can you oh, see yeah. That? I see it, yeah. Oh, yeah. But we're going to let that work while we get some of our other ingredients ready. The thermometer Gail has is about $32, but you can get another one for about $20. Okay. At Great. Home Depot. Thank you, Steve. I didn't look at Harbor Freight. That might be another I'll look there. I'm thinking I have a couple of friends who love to make yeast bread, and that might be a really nice gift. I'm still thinking about the old um, the old style that my grandmother had that had um, mercury in it. The candy yeah. thermometer? Yes. That's what I used up until I quit baking. Okay, so while our yeast is blooming, we're gonna to put together the next set of ingredients, which is a quarter a cup of buttermilk. Hmm. Wow. And I use buttermilk so infrequently that I very rarely buy buttermilk but I make it using vinegar added to the milk. Oh, really? Have you done that before? Yeah, I've done that before. Seems to work fine. Seems to work fine. It was just something, a little something to make the, 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 the milk curdle a little bit. Yes. Mm. Mm, but buttermilk tastes so good when you drink it. Oh, it no. <laughs> oh it's delicious. <laughs> right, Anne? Yeah, so you, you must get have one of out. those thermometers. It's a little bit different style. Uh -huh. You get one for about twelve dollars at Harbor Freight. Okay. Steve, okay. Thank you. So. Okay, so then we're going to add a room temperature egg to that. And we want it to be mm -hmm. room temperature so that it doesn't cool That's off our yeast. And I'm going to add that to the buttermilk. And then we need a third of a cup of oil, and I'm using olive oil because that's mostly all I use anymore. Good for your heart. Stir that together while we continue to wait for our yeast to bloom. And then, let's see, let me look at my directions here. We're also going to add the remaining sugar and the salt to this mixture. And the recipe calls for a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna add that to the buttermilk and egg mixture. Even the ingredients sound delicious. Salt and buttermilk, yeah. how can you go wrong? That's exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> with, did you say with buttermilk? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. he did. He did. He did. Yeah. Are you a fan of buttermilk too? I am not. Phil, but you know, but oh. Phil. Yeah. Phil, are you a fan of buttermilk? Uh, we use it for cooking quite a bit, but not for drinking. Oh, I use it making my pancakes and waffles. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, you all have reminded me this morning of my grandpa who used to love to eat buttermilk and cornbread. Yes. At night before he went to bed. Oh. <laughs> so I, I don't understand. Buttermilk was in the cornbread, or it was just a no, cup of coke. Cup of coke. A glass of buttermilk okay. and a crumble cornbread into the glass of buttermilk and eat it. Okay. And I I've, thought it was awful. 
<laughs> I've known country people who did that and loved it. Yeah. Well, he and my grandmother both loved it, but I never tasted it. I thought it was <laughs> oh. we we used to get uh, uh, my, uh, two two eggs or so, and then whip with sugar, and then put buttermilk in it, and then toasted oatmeal. Mmm, that was good. Oh my word! Like mm. a dessert. Mmm, that mm. sounds good, Yetta. Oh, it's it does good. sound good. And not cooked. Not cooked. Yeah, oh, that well, was that the time we did, we did raw <laughs> eggs. <laughs> Knock on wood, we haven't been sick yet. <laughs> there you go. Did anybody ever drink an Orange Julius back when they were yes. popular? Yes. Yep. I orange, love those. <laughs> orange Julius used to have the option of putting a raw egg in them when you buy them. Hmm. And a lot of people <laughs> When they first did, came out? What? Yeah. When they first came out? Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. And Where they that decided was, eating raw eggs was bad for you? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, a lot of us didn't know any better. <laughs> okay, so I think our yeast has significantly bloomed. We haven't waited quite as long as it says, but we're going to go ahead and move forward so we'll have time to get everything mixed together. So now I'm going to add our liquid mixture and the rest of our sugar into the yeast. It's interesting how we don't hear the engine after she gets it started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the noise noise canceling on the microphone cuts it out. Oh, is that right? Uh, okay. See how much sugar have. did she add at this time? Uh, the recipe called for a half a cup for the whole recipe, and I had used one tablespoon of that, and then I put in the rest. Okay. So. A half a cup minus a tablespoon is how much I put in there. So now I'm measuring out the four and a half cups of flour. Mm. That's three. That's a lot of flour. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gail, if you won't be sending the topping, uh, we'll probably need for you to put the recipe back up so we can figure out how to make the, the topping at home. Okay, I will do that. Okay. So now I'm going to gradually begin to add the flour, trying not to throw it all over the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> There's your snow. You wanted snow. There you I go. wanted snow on my apron, so. That's right. <laughs> and I'm going to start out with the regular batter hook on the blender. I don't know if you can see that. The yeah. Hook. And midway, I'm going to switch to the dough hook. Okay. Because ah. the dough is going to get thicker. But we're going to start with this one first. Yeah, I think so too. It says add it about a fourth of a cup at a time. Did you all hear the, the mixer just jump speeds? No. 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 It did just now. Wow. Oh. Once you get the, we were just saying, once you get the engine going, we don't hear it anymore. And Don said it was noise canceling, which is interesting. I, well, the uh, microphone on the camera above it is not on, but you all can't hear the mixer really? No. 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 We're not complaining. Only when it starts. Only when it starts. Only when it starts. It's so loud, I almost can't hear when you all are talking. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Wow. But maybe it's my ears. <laughs> <laughs> How much flour are you putting in? The recipe calls for four and a half cups. And I'm putting that in a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Was it difficult to get the recipe from Cinnabon? No, it's a copycat recipe you can find online. Okay. Oh. You would know. <laughs> I think my son actually hunted it down. Hmm. He wanted some of these, huh? 
Have you already made a batch? I have. Ooh. All right. Oh, oh I dope. see why you need the hook. My family has been making cinnamon rolls routinely um, since I was a kid. My grandmother always made homemade yeast rolls, and there always had to be a batch of cinnamon rolls. And sure. I know. My grandmother's for Thanksgiving or Christmas, there were homemade rolls to go with the meal. And then she also made cinnamon rolls from the same dough. Wow. This dough is a little bit different than the dough that we used to use for that. But My mother made not, not only cinnamon rolls, she made caramel rolls. Mm. Oh, there mm, we go. That good. sounds good. Yeah. I have made them caramel. What did you do I, basically, caramel? caramel rolls has a kind of um, almost a it's a brown sugary buttery mixture into it okay so this may taste like that because this has brown sugar instead of yeah, yeah. Sugar but but inside. it's the covering the top of it like it has a caramel uh i say the caramel in the bottom of the pan and you put the rolls in it so we turn them over it's caramel on the top oh like monkey bread yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really sticky good. Buns. Well, sticky yeah, buns. Sticky yeah. buns. Sticky buns. Or in bread, one yeah, like of it. the cinnamon roll recipes that I've used, after you bake them, it says to turn it upside down so that all of the sugar and caramel uh, stuff that ran to the bottom of the pan right. and back through the rolls as it cools. Right. Oh, really? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So I've done that before. Yeah. And if you don't, that gets really sticky on the bottom and you can't get it out. Yeah. Yeah, it almost car it almost becomes very hard in the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like eating a uh, I'm trying to think of what the best thing is. It's like eating a Peanut piece brittle. of toffee or something yeah. like that. Yes. Bad mm -hmm. bad bad yeah. Uh there's a place, there's a restaurant called Perkins. It's a pancake oh, place. Yeah. And they make huge caramel rolls, probably about this big around. Well, wow. that they they sell, you know, mm -hmm. and they're just yeah. absolutely huge. And they sell a lot of them. Have you all ever eaten at Ginger Brown's restaurant? Oh yeah, yes. Have we? Their cinnamon <laughs> rolls are really great. While that's mixing, I'm going to put a little bit of oil in my bowl. And I'm going to go sit this over at the oven to warm up this bowl so that when we transfer the dough, it doesn't cool it off. So okay. I'm right mm -hmm. Gail is so smart. She thinks of everything. Yeah. 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 The first time I went to Ginger Brown's, uh, I was told to watch out for the size of the cinnamon rolls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because they're going to throw one at you and hit you with it, or? No, they're gigantic. Oh, they're gigantic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when I was a kid, my mother didn't make cinnamon rolls, and she would buy these little paper packages at the store, and they'd have like a dozen in a, a place where normally you have one huge one. And I grew up thinking that cinnamon rolls were the si half the size of your fist. Uh -huh. And the first time... I had a date and my date took me to buy a cinnamon roll. I said, well, I'm going to need two of them. <laughs> <laughs> and he thought I was a real pig. <laughs> and then well, didn't you just share it with him? He should have gotten over that. Uh, well, when I saw it, I understood. But he said, no, 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 you're only going to order one. One is all you'll want. And I thought I was going to get this little bitty thing. And it was huge like y'all are talking about. Yes. <laughs> Funny, Martha. We have stories about cinnamon rolls, don't we? <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah. It's amazing how that hook. Works. That to finish, I come together in a ball uh, before we transfer it to our other bowl to rise. So, so Gail, how many uh, cinnamon rolls cinnamon rolls do you get out of a batch like this? Um, let's see.
Now we can hear because the bowl is shaking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. About twenty, about two dozen medium size. If you want them really big, of course you wouldn't get quite as many. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you. I'll show you that in just a little bit. Okay. Hold that thought. Okay. Hold that thought. <laughs> Well, also more cinnamon roll thoughts. Oh, Gail's frozen on us. Yeah. Right. Yes, her internet connection is not too good. I guess not. Who's that? You were frozen on us just for a little bit on the left. On, on okay, the... so I've taken the dough out and let me adjust my camera so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, thank you. There. <laughs> so I'm going to knead this by hand just a little bit before I transfer it to the bowl that's gonna be warming on the stove while we move on with the rest of the recipe. And in the olden days, before we had uh, the mixing bowls, mixing machines, we had to do that all by hand. Mm -hmm. yes. I still do. And I do too, yeah. The, the uh, dough hook is great, uh -huh. but missing one element the dough uh, getting the warmth of your hands mm -hmm. as you mm -hmm. need it. Mm -hmm. All right, so now I have this in a nice semi-smooth ball and we're gonna transfer that to the other dish. Ooh, and of course it's red and beautiful. And it's hot. It's hot, yeah, of course. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in here upside down and spin it around so that I get oil on all sides. And then we're gonna cover it with plastic wrap. Okay. And in the olden days that used to be out. Uh, That's what I just said to <laughs> Don. <laughs> We're gonna use a towel as well. Oh. We're also gonna cover it with a towel and then I'm gonna take it back over to sit on the stove. Okay. <laughs> Methods have certainly changed, haven't they? Mm -hmm. hey, hey, Gail, how, yes. long does, how long does it take that uh, dough you just made to rise? It's supposed to rise for about two hours. Two hours, Oops. okay. Hours. <laughs> So now, the fun part, I have a batch oh, ready, ready to roll. Ready. Yeah. It just started to collapse because I just pulled the plastic off of it. So I'm going to flour my surface again. And I'm going to dump this out. Oh, this was always the fun part. Sport. Plop. <laughs> Here it comes. Uh oh. Stayed inside, so we're gonna, gonna have to scrape it out. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, don't miss a, a a morsel of that. No, that's two or three buns, right? Mm -hmm. there. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so now the recipe said to kind of punch it down to get the air out, and then I'm gonna cut this in half. So I need half of this for the next program. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> Where do you get that okay. thing? Um, you know, I'm not sure where I got it. It's a uh, a kitchen tool. Okay. I think I have two of them. Kind of like a pastry cutter. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a little bit sharp on one side. So now we're going to press this out and try to keep it in a good even rectangle if we can because it'll make our rolls turn out better. And then I'm going to take the rolling pin and I like the rolling pin that doesn't have the handles on it. Sometimes the handles get in the way. So I'm gonna roll this out, rotating the dough part way through. Oh, this is always such fun. Mm -hmm. Can anybody <laughs> smell, can anybody smell the yeast? 
Oh yeah, mm -hmm. it smells yeah. delicious. Yeah, and it tastes good too. It will clump yeah. a raw dough. Doesn't oh, it? Yes. I have a really funny story to tell you all about that. Oh, please do. And this is a memory that it's you know how some of our memories are tied to a picture we've seen. Mm -hmm. This memory, I remember it when I told you all that my grandmother used to make homemade bread. Mm -hmm. Get the rolls in the pan, rise on the stove, and cover it with a towel. And I would go in and take a pinch off of the top of the roll. <laughs> I would go in and do it again, get ready to put the rolls in the oven and they wouldn't be risen because I had pinched them so many times that they <laughs> Did you pinch them and take a little piece say out of them? I got in trouble. I bet you did. Don, say that again. Uh, did, you, did you just pinch them or did you take a pinch and pull out and eat it? Oh, I ate it. Okay, yeah. good. That's what I thought. <laughs> no sense in pinching it I if you're in trouble and I had to quit doing that. I bet. <laughs> so now we have our dough all spread out. And the recipe calls for, uh, let's see, for the filling. So now we're going to do our filling. Um. And filling for the inside of the rolls is one and a quarter cups of light brown sugar. So I'm gonna grab the brown sugar. I'm gonna dirty every measuring cup in the drawer today. Hey, <laughs> use them all. That's why God made dishwashers with a top rack. It's a top rack. So they don't melt. There's one cup. And of course, with brown sugar, it doesn't matter if there's a little extra for this. And a quarter cup of brown sugar. And then we're supposed to add two and a half tablespoons of cinnamon to that. Wow. And that's tablespoons. That's a lot. But then again, that you're doing the rolls. Uh -huh. Don't do that. I keep double checking that to make sure I'm reading it right. There's <laughs> a tablespoon, two tablespoons, and a half of a tablespoon. Mm. All right. It's a lot of cinnamon. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then this recipe calls for two tablespoons of cornstarch. Mm -hmm. Add to this, and that's to help it thicken mm -hmm. oh. so that it won't all just run out. Uh -huh. Oh. And I should have bought more cornstarch yesterday. Now I'm going to take a fork and mix that together. That's all dry stuff, right? Yeah. This is all yeah, dry. Yeah. Just mix it so that there's not any big lumps and so that the cinnamon is mixed throughout. And then we're going to spread eight tablespoons of butter onto the dough. Wow. Mm. Mm. That's a whole stick. Whole stick. But since this is half of the dough, I'm only going to use half of that amount. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put four tablespoons of butter on top of the dough. And I've softened it so that it's going to easily spread. And spread that all over the dough. There's just nothing not to love about this. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> One of the recipes the nutritionists don't want us to eat, right? Right. Yes. Well, yeah. well, special occasion only. Yeah. For those of us who grew up with cinnamon rolls, how many of you like nuts in your cinnamon rolls and how many don't? Like. 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 Don't. Don't? 
No. Nancy? Nancy? No, I don't no. like it. I like okay. it. Good to know. But it's my only choice. Yeah, you need it to get the cement roll. That's right. <laughs> well, you know, that's I'm that's all I give you all, Edith. I didn't. My mother used to do it both ways. Mm. Because there were some who liked it and some who did not. Did she use pecans or walnuts? Pecans. Pecans, okay. I think we hardly ever had walnuts. Okay. Now I'm going to sprinkle this generously over the dough using about half of the mix that we had. And spread that out. And then the rest, mm. try to get it all the way to the edge so we don't have rolls that don't have cinnamon all the way up to the top. Can you all see that? Yes, yep. ma'am. Yep. Oh, yep. Right. Now I'm going to take the rolling pin, Ooh. press it into the dough so it doesn't all fall out whenever we put them in the pan. Oh. Mm. Did you just know to do that or was that part of the instruction? This was part of the instruction, something I've never done before. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Live and learn. So now we're going to take the dough and roll it, rolling it a little bit at a time working up and down. Can you all see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Is it parchment paper or wax paper that you're using? Uh, I have parchment paper. Okay. And I think you could use either. Mm -hmm. nice. mm -hmm. They look so little and innocent right now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to turn this around so you can see I'm at the final edge and I'm going to pull it up and pinch it to the rest of the roll Okay. with my fingers. And I'm not sure this is how the Cinnabon people do it, but okay. this is how my grandmother taught me. That's life experience. Okay, now... I have a set of prepared pans that I have lined with parchment paper and coated that with butter. Yum. I'm now going to cut the rolls and put them into the pans. And there are two ways to do this. I'm gonna cut off the end and we're gonna put it in a different dish. And depending on how thick you want your cinnamon rolls to be determines how wide you cut the strips. So I'm gonna do them about an inch, maybe a little over. So can you all see? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. And I'm gonna put that in our pan. And pressing the dough in does help it not to everything to fall out. Now I'm gonna show you a trick that I learned from my grandmother. So I have a spool of thread that lives in my kitchen, <laughs> regular sewing thread. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna cut a piece of my regular sewing thread. And she would take the thread and slide it underneath the roll of dough and use that to cut the cinnamon rolls. Oh, so can cool. you Ah. Oh. So hold it together. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to pull it apart and it cut the cinnamon roll in a perfect cut. That's perfect. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. What? And what this does is sometimes this kind of squishes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, the, and the thread does not. Yeah. So uh -huh. let's really. Move the camera over so you all can see this a little better. Let me get that back up. Unfortunately, I have to leave, but hands will stay. Okay. Thank okay. you, Geta. Okay. Thank Hans you, Gail. I can't wait. To thank taste you. Thank them. you.
Okay. Yeah. Bye. Bye, yeah. okay so slide the thread underneath the roll at the depth I want, pull it together. And now it's cut. So the pressure is even since you're using thread. So it's not yes. just on the top. Yes. That makes perfect. And when, I, when I get this finished, I'm going to show you the difference in how they came out. Your other camera just went to black. Hmm. Oh. Thank there you. Because it was telling me the battery was low. Oh. Okay. One more. All right. Now, is this the camera that's big? Yes. Yes. Can you see the difference? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So these are the ones I cut with the thread. Oh my goodness. The other ones are the ones I cut with the cutter. Oh okay. yeah. It's very much different. Very oh different. my goodness. You're very different. smart. So we're gonna go ahead and finish cutting this dough <laughs> to get these others because these have to rise again before they're baked. Those are flossing. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> probably that? use you could probably use this dental floss too. Yeah. Dental I floss, yes. You just wouldn't oh. want to make sure you get unflavored. Oh yes. yeah. Unflavored. Yes. Yeah, you don't want you don't want mint in there. Or cinnamon. But you could use cinnamon floss. Ooh. That is such a beautiful cut. It just is. For that tip. Beautiful. I'm surprised there's not some sort of tool that actually lets you do that, How's that? <laughs> easier. I'm sure there might be some, you know, that in a commercial. Maybe yeah. a wire. What color thread is it or does it, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter, but this happens to be Navy thread. Ah. It's just it ended up in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. It's easier to see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so now here's our next batch. Wow. Beautiful. And we want these to rise so that they're double in size before we bake them. So okay. I'm going to take both of these over to sit by the stove and cover them up to rise. The special tool that I have to use when I do my cinnamon rolls yes. is a big serving spoon that I press down on the seam of the can. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't need to do that. I just whop them. You know, you know, oh, how to Dusty them, was right? here. Jerry Clower, you know, the whoppers. Oh, yes. Great if, if Pull off the outer level and just hit it on the edge of the counter. Ah. So I think Phil thinks he's a comedian. What do y'all think? Yes. Was that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I said, I think Phil thinks he's a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He is. Okay. So those two end pieces, they're not going to be, most people would rather have the others. So I've put those in this little dish to cook them separately. Okay. But these are actually the ones I like because they don't have quite as much cinnamon and sugar in them. Okay. Oh. All right. So now that I have this big, huge mess in the kitchen, <laughs> pause, and we're going to take a look at what the final product looks like. All right. Okay. The cinnamon rolls, once they rise the second time after they're rolled into the pans, uh, they need to rise again for at least another hour. Two hours is better because they're going to be lighter. Mm. And then they for 12 to 15 minutes, depending on how done you like them. And then once they come out of the oven, then you're going to frost them 
And there's a couple of options. This recipe and the Cinnabons use a cream cheese frosting. And I'll go ahead and pop that back up on the screen for those of you who are taking notes. Or take a picture of it if that would be easier. So um, if your pictures of all of us are in the way, you can move those about. So it's the cream cheese frosting down here in the corner of my slide. Do you all see that? Yeah. Yes. yes. <clears throat> the lemon Wait. juice is optional. How interesting. Do you use the lemon juice? Um, generally, I don't because my son doesn't prefer it that way. Mm -hmm. But I think it just, you know, it's not a lot. It's just one teaspoon, but it just gives it a little bit of tart to it. So it cuts, helps cut the sweet a little bit, I think. Mm. There you go. My mother would never put frosting on it. We put butter. Mm -hmm. Use butter. My grandmother also used to, does anybody still need that recipe up? No. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Okay, I'll wait just a minute. My grandmother used to just do a uh, cream or a powdered sugar frosting where she put butter mm -hmm. yeah. and powdered sugar and stirred yeah. it together and would put that over oh. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and that would be the option that I would have to use if I iced them before I mail them. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like maybe everybody decide if you want butter or cream. Yeah, we can we can figure at least I can figure out my own what I want. To and do. ice them once they arrive. Yeah. So while you finish jotting down that recipe, I'm gonna step across the kitchen to get the finished product. I'll be right back. All right. Okay. All right. Nancy, let us know when you're finished. That lemon juice is really interesting. It's a little tart, I guess. Uh huh. It probably makes it more interesting for a mm. company, so that it's different than everybody else's in the whole world. Yeah. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Sorry. All of that smell of cinnamon's putting you to sleep, oh. huh, Steve? Oh, he's <laughs> oh no, it's still recovering from Mark. Oh. They left yesterday. Did they? Yeah, it's kind Did of it's quiet around the house. Did he keep Was you that? awake at night? Did the baby keep you awake at night? No, but he's just activity, you know. Uh-huh. He's so cute and you know, you want to play with him and things like that. So is he still sleeping a lot? Um what is he, he does about, take a nap. Six months old? Is he about he, six he's months He's about now? five months right now. Okay. You know, but he is the cutest little thing. He, you know, he, he, when kids get tired, a lot of times they just get grumpy and grouchy. He mm -hmm. smiles. <laughs> he laughs. <laughs> the only time he gets grouchy is when he's wet or he's, uh, he's hungry, you know. Smart, smart boy. Oh, yeah. And he will steal your heart. He needs to be on commercials. Oh. <laughs> does. They can make a fortune of him from him. because uh, he's he's got one of these little smiles that will just melt people's hearts. Oh. Uh, so he's a happy baby. That's good for mommy. Yep, it is. It's yep. They don't know how blessed they are. And what is his name? Mark. Mark. Oh, yep. that's an easy one. Yeah. All right. So are y'all ready for me to show you the final product? Yes. yes ma'am. Nancy, sure. are you through writing down the recipe? Yes. Okay. All right. Here we go. Ta-da. Oh, beautiful. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They smell beautiful too. They smell beautiful too, yes. Yeah. Sure. So you will be receiving an oh, end of wow. a pan. Oh wow. Wow. Okay. Oh. This is how you will receive your package. Pretty. Be in well, an envelope, of course. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank oh, you wonderful. very much, Gil. Oh my Gil. goodness, yeah. that's great. 
Very thoughtful, yeah. Well, that's worth going out and buying cream cheese. <laughs> see, see how it arrives with the postal service. You know, it might be squished up by the time it gets there. Nah, nah. Well, this has a, this has a lid that goes on. I, it. I know. Fold it down. Okay. So hopefully they will arrive. And I was at the store yesterday, and they did have cream cheese on the shelf. Okay. okay. Yay! So. It's only my butter cookies that come crumbled. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And those are the ones that Nancy asked for the recipe from this morning is the butter cookies that were all crumbles when you got them. Yeah. Oh, they're they great. Oh, great. My, my wife bought some in the store because they were on sale. They're mm -hmm. just, they're not as good. They're not, oh, as, good. not as good. Uh, and the ones that are in the tin, is that the ones yes. you're referring to? No, no, okay. it's, it's in a, it's another package type of thing. Oh. But it's similar. I used to really love the ones that are in a tin and they've changed the recipe. Yeah, yeah. And they're not near as good. I yeah. hate it when this, they do that. Change these are these are kind of harder mm -hmm. than the others. They're just they're almost like a wafer, hard mm -hmm. wafer type of thing. Kind yeah. of like a communion wafer. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, but anyway. Melt in your mouth. They're good. You know, they're good, but they're not as good. Right. Well, let's take a look at what's coming up tomorrow now that Gail has us finished. All right. There is today, drum roll, Peggy Spear will be bringing us movement art movement. tomorrow. I can't wait to see what that is. We're going to all uh, move. We're going to be moving them. I sure. guess we are. She will show <laughs> us movement. Maybe we'll, be, maybe we'll be healed by the movement. And you never know. <laughs> no, you don't ever know. Gail, All right. Thank you. Everyone, I'm going to have to slide out because I have to be on the other program in about 15 minutes. So I've got okay. to do a little bit of cleanup and get ready to start over. All thank, right. you, thank, you. Thank, thank you, Gail. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Gail.